Well, let me tell you how CBRS will revolutionize the industry in much the same way that the uh, decision by the FCC to open the ISM bands in 2.4 gigahertz have led to the revolution that we have today with Wi-Fi and, and then you know what's happened in 5 gigahertz and the prevalence of Wi-Fi and virtually every kind of uh, device from smartphones to tablets to consumer electronics, uh, you know, residential to enterprise to carrier classes of Wi-Fi. That whole ecosystem came out of the decision again back in the late 80s really uh, to open the 2.4 gigahertz band. CBRS is as big an event uh, because it represents really the democratization and the opening up of the cellular ecosystem to a much broader uh, ecosystem of deployers. So, you know, and CBRS is really just one example. I should highlight that. So we talk about CBRS in the U.S., but you have countries in Europe, especially company, uh, countries like Holland, Germany, Sweden, the U.K., that are also looking at uh, local licensing approaches in cellular-oriented frequencies. And what that's going to do is allow uh, industrial players, enterprises, hoteliers, hospitals to deploy their own private LTE systems uh, for their internal communications needs, but then also to open those up to the mobile subscribers of the major mobile operators. And so it's going to really enable a whole new generation of internal private LTE communications, but then also help solve the indoor mobile coverage problem at the same time. So. Um, I don't honestly think we've envisioned all of the use cases that we'll see for CBRS and uh, counterparts like it abroad. Uh, a couple of the major regulatory ones that I just talked about, obviously, you know, we're tracking very closely what's happening with CBRS. The good news is that framework is well established at this point, and we're really just waiting for the final uh, certification, uh, well, testing and certification of the spectrum access systems. As soon as that's completed, we'll get into initial commercial deployments in CBRS. We believe that'll happen in Q2 of 2019. Um, Overseas, I would say, again, look at some of the things that are going on with local licensing, specifically in the 3.4 to 3.8 range. So uh, you've got activity in Sweden, uh, in Germany, they're looking at 3.7 to 3.8. Holland has actually had a local licensing opportunity in 3.4.10 to 3.800 for some number of years now. Um, and in the UK, they're looking at uh, some really innovative approaches for local licensing in 3.8 to 4.2. So I would say those types of things in terms of private LTE, next generation neutral host uh, cellular systems. And then the other major regulatory uh, activity that people should be following is what's going on with six gigahertz unlicensed. So as we were talking about, we've got 2.4, we've got five gigahertz, but uh, the good news, bad news is that uh, Wi-Fi continues to increase in popularity. We want to make wider. Uh, we want to make use of wider channels to get to higher speeds with Wi-Fi uh, based technologies. And so, in order to do that, we really need more spectrum for unlicensed operation. And so, Ruckus is working with a number of other leading industry players to open up the six gigahertz band for unlicensed operation. And, and that should definitely be of interest to the enterprise and to carriers, because not only will that be helpful for Wi-Fi and. Uh, 11AX, 802.11AX, or what's known as Wi-Fi 6 in the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance uh, parlance, but it will also be used by 3GPP technology such as uh, 5G NR. Uh, there'll be variants of that which operate uh, either solely in unlicensed spectrum or that can use it as an adjunct to licensed bands. From my perspective, the road to 5G looks a lot like what uh, Ruckus has been doing very successfully for really the last 10 years. So. 5G, if you look at the IMT 2020 goals, you know, and you, those are technical goals, but it's about uh, densification of the network, it's about higher speeds, it's about area capacity, it's about very low latencies. And what that really all presupposes is very dense deployments of small cells, and it also presupposes that you've got ubiquitous coverage, including not only the outdoor macro networks, which we all know and love uh, today, but it also presupposes that we're gonna have that same type of uh, cellular coverage or cellular signal when we go indoors. And so Ruckus you know, has been delivering dense, small cell in-building solutions for the last decade, and that's really what 5G is gonna be about.